On Good Friday, the Holy Sepulcher is installed in the church, specialized exhibitions are opened and theatrical performances of a patriotic nature are organized. The church used to be the starting point for funeral processions of famous citizens. In 1907, the funeral ceremony of Stanislav Wyspiansky started from here. Here we see another surviving tower of the city walls, the Gallantry Tower. The tower dates back to the 15th century. It is worth paying attention to its facade, which is covered with an irregular frieze made of dark, heavily burnt bricks. This optical deception may have made it more difficult for attackers to aim. The defense of this tower was the responsibility of first the cobbler's shop and then the haberdasher's shop. The haberdashers once made closet accessories such as belts, belts, buttons, and other items of clothing that are now considered haberdashery. In case of a threat to the city, they also took up arms, as we can see. The Julius Slawicki Theater is one of Poland's most famous and respected theater scenes. The theater was named after the greatest Polish poet and playwright of the Romantic era in 1909. The building of the theater, designed by Jan Zawiejski and erected in 1891-93 on the site of the demolished Church of the Holy Spirit, whose unique appearance causes both admiration and bewilderment when trying to determine the year of its construction, is one of the most valuable monuments of eclectic style architecture in Europe. The theater is located in the historical center of Krakow, on the St. Spirit Square. The inscription on the facade reads, Krakow to National Art. On the pediment of the theater building there are sculptures of allegorical characters, on the left poetry, drama, and comedy, by Tadeusz Blotnicki, on the right music, opera, and operetta, by Alfred Don. Below the cornice are allegorical busts of joy and sorrow, by Mieczysław Zawiejski. On top of the center are statues of a young man in a robe, Tadeusz, and a young woman in noble attire, Zazia, by Michael Korpel. The interiors of the theater are decorated with frescoes by the Viennese artist Anton Touch and the famous designer Henrik Semiradsky. Next to the stage, the old dressing room of the famous actor Ludwig Salski remains, in which frescoes from the 19th century have been preserved. The theater began to fulfill its role as a national theater at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. It became the birthplace of the modern direction of Polish theater, its scenography, staging, and acting. A whole generation of young Poland, Mloda Polska, led by Stanislaw Wyspiański, poet, playwright, and painter, grew up here. The theater premiered such well-known plays as The Wedding, 1901, and Liberation, 1903, which are among the most important cultural events in Poland. The Julius Slawicki Theater was the first place in the world to stage plays based on Polish Romantic literature. The theater staged plays by brilliant directors, and many prominent figures of theater art, such as Polakowski, Salski, Fricks, and others, worked here. A generation of outstanding directors, among them Christian Lupa, debuted here in the 70s. Leading artists, designers and, of course, the best Polish actors collaborated with the theater, including Modrzejewska, Wysoka, Salska, Szymaskowa, Jarosowska, Jarasz, Lomniki, and Holyubek. Today there are many young people on the stage of the theater, Maja Klesowska, Agnieszka Alston, Agata Dudagraz, Magdalena Pikers, Paweł Mikiewicz. The theater stages productions of venerable directors, Barbara Sass, Krzysztof Babicki, Janusz Wisniewski, Mesiej Wojciechowski, Rudolf Zolo. Today the theater plays an important role in the cultural life of the city. In its performances it demonstrates the preservation of old Polish and European traditions combined with the search for new ways of art. Since 2002 the theater has been home to the famous poetry salon of Anadna, and since 2000 it has been operating an open stage where performances are staged during summer nights. The theater building hosts many events, exhibitions, tours, symposiums, and conferences. It is said that it is impossible to understand Polish culture if you do not visit the Julia Slovak Theater. The Julia Slawicki Theater was the first building in Krakow to be electrically illuminated. To supply the theater with electricity, 
a power plant was built in its courtyard, which is now used as a small stage. Florianska Street is a small street, just over 330 meters long, but one of the most famous and most representative streets in Krakow. It leads directly to the heart of the city, the main market square. The street began to be built up in the 14th century, and it has been called by its name for almost 700 years. Initially, the buildings that appeared on Florian Street in 1330 were residential in character and belonged, as a rule, to rich bourgeois, wealthy burghers, and nobility. At the end of the 15th century, most of the houses on the street were already stone. It was one of the first cobbled streets in Krakow. From the end of the 17th century, hotels, restaurants, and museums gradually began to push out the wealthy residents. Then Florianska Street became a roadway, and in 1881 the first horse-drawn tramway, Konka, in Krakow was launched, which was converted into an electric tramway two decades later, in 1901. Although most of the houses on the street were rebuilt, especially at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries, many details have been preserved that testify to their long-standing, often medieval origins. Today the street is built up with picturesque mansions in the style of Renaissance, Baroque and Classicism, most of which have an interesting history. House number 45 is the Beltsowski House, known for its historic confectionery Café Jama Michalica, a corner of artists from the Young Poland period. The founder of the confectionery was Jan Apolinarij Michalik, the son of a Zemstvo chief, who was sent by his father to Lvov to study confectionery as punishment for his poor studies. After his studies, the young Michalik opened the Lviv confectionery, Kukerny Lwowska, in this house in 1895. For the sake of advertising, the young confectioner began to give his cakes sounding names, Flirt, Carmen, Mikey Lewis. Artists from the Academy of Fine Arts, we saw it on Maytejko Square, actors and writers came here, and they dubbed the Café Michalik Spid because of the fact that there were no windows in the room. Many times, due to the lack of money, artists paid the owner with their paintings, which the owner hung on the walls. It was here that the idea of publishing an album of caricatures of Krakow actors was born, which was published in 1904 and was a great success. In 1905, a young poet and playwright Jan August Kisiluski, who had arrived from Paris, proposed to open a literary and artistic cabaret here, which he called Zeleny Balonic, Green Balloon. The texts for the cabaret were written by Tadeusz Boyzelonski. The Green Balloon gathered the intellectual elite of Krakow, artists, university professors, the entire Krakow Parnassus. Many people dreamed of being invited to Mitch Alex Pitt in those years. Now artists began to decorate the confectionery with their paintings, caricatures and stained glass windows. The popularity grew, so in 1910 the owner expanded the premises. After the end of the First World War in 1918, the owner sold the business to his waiters, but under their management the cabaret gradually fell into disrepair. The tradition was not revived until after World War II. Today, cabaret performances are organized here on Friday and Saturday evenings, featuring famous Polish artists. The walls of the cafe are still decorated with paintings, drawings, and caricatures by artists associated with cabaret. The windows display puppets from the theatrical performances shown here. We pass a narrow house on the left side, number 41. This is the former home of Jan Matejko. The most famous Polish painter of the 19th century, whose paintings have been known to every Pole for generations, was born here in 1838, lived almost all his life and worked here. In 1873 Matejko rebuilt the house, completely changing the facade, inviting the famous architect Tomasz Prelinski. In 1893, the artist died in the same house. After Jan Matejko's death, his friends created a biographical museum of the painter in the house. They tried to faithfully recreate the interiors of the rooms from the artist's time and collected numerous memorabilia. Among other things, the original decoration of the living room and bedroom, personal belongings, documents, household items, family photos were preserved. 
an art gallery has also been created, including sketches for large canvases such as Nicolaus Copernicus and Jan Sobieski under Vienna, which are exhibited in major galleries in Poland. In the artist's former studio you can watch a movie dedicated to his work. In the museum you can also see evidence of Matejko's collecting hobbies. The artist collected examples of arts and crafts and military equipment from Poland and Europe, as well as the Middle and Far East, which served him as props in his paintings. His collections include not only fabrics, clothing, armor, and weapons from various historical periods, but also ancient instruments of torture recovered from the town hall dungeons. It is also worth adding that in 1880 Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria-Hungary was a guest of this house. In general, Franz Joseph is very revered in Galicia, which included the southern part of Poland, which was ceded to Austria as a result of the partition of the country, because in his old age, the formidable monarch turned into a kind grandfather who cared about the prosperity of the region. Almost all technical innovations of that time were bound to appear in Galicia. For example, the first regular airline in Poland appeared here. It connected Krakow and Lviv. So it's no wonder that houses often had a portrait of Franz Joseph. Even today, many cafes and restaurants display his portrait, recreating the atmosphere of old times. St. Mark's Street crosses Florian Street, which in medieval times led to the Executioner's Tower. In the olden days, only the craftsmen were addressed as maestro, which is why the street used to be called the workshop. The executioner was despised by medieval townspeople and lived apart from everyone else. In addition to executions, flagellation of criminals, i.e. cutting off their ears and branding them with a red-hot iron, the executioner also swept the streets, caught stray dogs and cleaned the city's cloaca. Thanks to his knowledge of anatomy, the maestro sometimes practiced medicine. His services were used by those who could not pay a healer or who wanted to keep their illness a secret. In Krakow, the executioners were often Germans, Poles abhorred this trade. We pass a narrow house on the left side of the street, number 41. This is the former home of Jan Matejko. Here was born in 1838, lived almost all his life and worked the most famous Polish painter of the 19th century, whose paintings have been known to every Pole for several generations. In 1873 Matejko rebuilt the house, completely changing the facade, inviting the famous architect Tomasz Prelinski. In 1893, the artist died in the same house. After Jan Matejko's death, his friends created a biographical museum of the painter in the house. They tried to faithfully recreate the interiors of the rooms from the artist's time and collected numerous memorabilia. Among other things, the original decoration of the living room and bedroom, personal belongings, documents, household items, family photos were preserved. An art gallery has also been created, including sketches for large canvases such as Nicolaus Copernicus and Jan Sobieski under Vienna, which are exhibited in major galleries in Poland. In the artist's former studio you can watch a movie dedicated to his work. In the museum you can also see evidence of Matejko's collecting hobbies. The artist collected examples of arts and crafts and military equipment from Poland and Europe, as well as the Middle and Far East, which served him as props in his paintings. His collections include not only fabrics, clothing, armor, and weapons from various historical periods, but also ancient instruments of torture recovered from the town hall dungeons. It is also worth adding that in 1880 Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria-Hungary was a guest of this house. In general, Franz Joseph is very revered in Galicia, which included the southern part of Poland, which was ceded to Austria as a result of the partition of the country, because in his old age, the formidable monarch turned into a kind grandfather who cared about the prosperity of the region. Almost all technical innovations of that time were bound to appear in Galicia. For example, the first regular airline in Poland appeared here. It connected Krakow and Lviv. So it's no wonder that houses often had a portrait of Franz Joseph. Even today, many cafes and restaurants display his portrait, recreating the atmosphere of old times. Further on, 
Florian Street is crossed by St. Mark's Street, which in medieval times led to the Executioner's Tower. In the olden days, only shoulder makers were addressed as maestros, which is why the street was formerly known as the workshop. The executioner was despised by medieval townspeople and lived apart from everyone else. In addition to executions, flagellation of criminals, i.e. cutting off their ears and branding them with a red-hot iron, the executioner also swept the streets, caught stray dogs and cleaned the city's cloaca. Thanks to his knowledge of anatomy, the maestro sometimes practiced medicine. His services were used by those who could not pay a healer or who wanted to keep their illness a secret. In Krakow, the executioners were often Germans, Poles abhorred this craft. The house under the three bells number 24 attracts attention with three bells above the entrance group. In the 16th century, the house was owned by craftsmen who cast bells. The three bells were added to the front of the restaurant by its founding owner Joseph Weiss. One of the bells bears the date the house was built in 1830. In the early 20th century, Vincentius Sadalecki, a butcher chef who owned neighboring apartment buildings No. 20 and No. 18, lived here. House No. 25 houses the Pharmacological Museum, Museum Pharmacji, of the Krakow Medical Academy, which tells the history of pharmacy in Poland from the Middle Ages to the present day. The exhibition halls recreate, among other things, an ancient apothecary cellar and alchemical halls, historical interiors of pharmacies at the turn of the 16th and 17th centuries, as well as pharmacies in the Empire, Biedermeier, Neoclassicism, and Neo-Baroque styles. Here you can see antique pharmacy equipment. One of the halls recreates the office of the inventor of the kerosene lamp Ignacy Lukasevic with a collection of lamps of the 19th century. This museum is widely known among specialists. It is run by the Jagiellonian University and is the largest in Poland and one of the few of its kind in the world. House No. 14 houses the oldest hotel in the city, founded around 1800, the Hotel Under the Rose. In the second half of the 16th century the house belonged to the family of Prosper Prauna, who in 1558, at the command of King Sigismund II Augustus, organized a regular postal service between Krakow and Venice. Since that time the house has been adorned with a beautiful Renaissance portal with massive columns. The Latin inscription above the entrance reads, Let this house stand until the ant drinks the sea and the turtle walks around the world. At the beginning of the 19th century, the Burchinsky family, who owned the house by that time, opened a hotel here. In 1805, Russian Tsar Alexander I and his brother Konstantin became its guests. From that time the hotel was called Hotel de Russie, Russian Hotel. Under this name the hotel existed until 1864, when Russian troops brutally suppressed the January Uprising, and the name Russian became offensive. Then the hotel was given the neutral name under the rose. Franz Liszt stayed here in 1843, when he came to Krakow to give concerts. But the information on the plaque that Honor de Balzac slept here can be considered historically untrue. In reality, the famous French writer stayed at the Hotel Under the White Rose, which was located at 13 Stratham Street. Subsequently, the restaurant Under the White Rose was moved from there to Florianska Street, which is why there was such a misunderstanding. House Number 15 Under the Squirrel the name comes from the coat of arms that was attached to the building site during the reconstruction in the 30s of the 20th century. This house was the home of Joseph Raphael Gzierwikowski, professor of the Crown School and surgeon at the end of the 17th century. He organized the first surgical clinic in Krakow. A plaque from 1989 with the inscription Joseph Raphael Gzierwikowski lived and died here 1743-1816, the father of Polish surgery is dedicated to his memory. House number 13 is known by two names, the Amidzinski Mansion, Kamienica Amenzinska, and the Kamito Palace, Palak Kamito. The house was built in the first half of the 14th century and, of course, was rebuilt many times. In the 16th century the house belonged to a Krakow voivode named Kamita. After his death it was inherited by his widow and then by their son. Hence the name, Kamita Palace. 
In the next century the house was owned for a long time by a wealthy citizen Stanislav Amandi, with Italian roots, and received its name three times. Later it was owned by various people, including rich and noble ones, but the citizens of Krakow decided that three names for one house was too much. So no new ones appeared. The house under the Mother of God, number 7, has Renaissance frames, as on Vatel, and a beautiful statue of the Madonna and Child of the late Renaissance on the facade, which gave its name to the house. Inside the building there are well-preserved late Gothic stone portals.